Okay, Buzz Miller, Wannabe Studios. We've taken the guitar, we've added our carbon fiber to the neck joint. The next thing to do in hot rodding it, make it look pretty. Pretty for you, probably different from pretty for me. We want our guitar to look different than that guy's and we want it to look different than that girl's because the guitar is gonna become a piece of us. So let's make it look cool. Let's make it look different. It doesn't have to be a great paint job. The early Eddie Van Halen paint jobs were crap. Uh, George Lynch screwed up some paint jobs and he thinks that that is his best guitar because he put the wrong stuff in it and it cracked like crazy. Whatever it is, we paint our guitars for two reasons. Number one, to look cool. Number two, to protect the wood. Lots of woods are very porous. They will take our, uh, our fingerprints and our sweat and our blood and our goop and dust and smoke and they will suck them into the body. We want to protect against that, so we paint them. Now, what does that mean? First thing you want to do when you're going to hot rod a guitar, make it the shape you want. If your hand doesn't fit there, make it bigger. If you want something cool there, cut a hole in it. Other than right in here, there's nothing sacred about a guitar. So cut a hole in it. You want a handle? You want a handle with no fingers because it's different and it's kind of like what Steve Vai did, but I think it's cooler? Then do it. If you want to put your claws and you want them straight out the back and you want them to actually cut into the back of the guitar, do it. If you want a little bit more room for your hand or you want a little bit of a soloist feel or you don't like the super sharp edges of a RG, cut it. Grab a file and hack it. Grab a grinder and grind through it. It doesn't have to be perfect, and we can always take sandpaper and make it perfect later on. Get the body to what you want. I hate a real sharp edge here, because a lot of times I play sitting down. I'll record for hours sitting down, and my arm will get that line through there, and my hand starts falling asleep because the line's too hard on my arm. So I radius this real fat. So I can play standing up, sitting down, I never have an edge to sit on. But the problem is, is we've just exposed that raw wood. You can always use the paint that's on a guitar to be the primer of your next coat of paint. New paint will not stick to old paint. You have to rough up the old paint. You rough it up between 400 and 600 grit. That's the magic window right there. If you rough it up to 180 grit, you paint your new paint on and you can see all the sand marks of the old paper. It looks awful. If you use 1500 grit, it's way too polished. You paint the new stuff on and it'll fall off. It may fall off in an hour, it may fall off in five days. You may be sitting here playing and it'll stick to your arm and a big chunk comes out. The new paint has to have something to grab onto. So we rough that thing up with 400 and 600 and we paint our new paint on there. Whether we're using Krylon in a can or we're using fancy automotive paint. I cut through to wood. Now that you've cut through to wood, you can't just paint right over it. What are you going to do? you got to seal it. Does it need anything special to seal it? No. Whatever paint you're using is good enough to seal this body. The way I like to seal bodies is I like to hang them out in the sun. I like to get them nice and hot. I live in Arizona. That takes about an hour. If you're not in Arizona, maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Let that body get hot. What is it doing? It's off-gassing. It's actually swelling and pushing some of the moisture out of it. It's pushing some of the other items out of it. Then you take it from outside into inside, and as it starts cooling, you hit it with your first coat of paint, and it will suck that paint into the first layer of the wood, of the different um, grains. Let that activate for whatever the can says. It, Allow five to ten minutes to dry. Let five to ten minutes. Don't just spray it again or else it will always be gummy and you can't sand it. Wait for it. Spray another coat. You can add a third coat. Don't go any more than that. Then, if you like that grain, if you've got kind of a cool grain, if you've got a swamp ash or something and it's got a really cool grain in your new color, maybe just leave it. That might be all you need. But if you want it to look perfectly finished and you want to have throw some clear on it and have it be a sheet of glass, what you do is you let that activate for however long it takes, usually about 24 hours. Take your sandpaper, sand it nice and flat. Chances are it's not going to go fully flat. You're going to have some pieces of wood sticking out, and there's going to be some divots still in your paint. 
Then you paint two or three more coats on it. Let that activate, sand it, and now you should start be start getting very flat. Once you're very flat, then you decide what you want to do. I like the Universe guitars when they first came out from Ibanez, so I'm making this a Super Ibanez. I made the Universe on it. Is there anything trick here? No. This is black paint. It may look cool, it may have a lot of effect in it, it's just black paint. And then you can take a little red, paint a little red over there, take your can of soda and paint black around it. Okay, that's done, I've got one planet. And then I take my tape and I put my tape down and I spray a little white in it. And then I make a couple of things and, and spray a little white and spray a little black and I get my moon. And then I made a little uh, stencil and I made Saturn. Then I took in my first layers of clear, I added a little bit of purple pearl. Actually, I won't say a little. I added a ton of purple pearl because I wanted to kind of show off what pearl can do if you put it over just a plain black. So that's purple pearl. This up here and then kind of a swirl through here and then down through here, not so much on the edge, is a color change pearl. This goes from green to that same purple to aqua and to blue. So sometimes in a certain light, this guitar will be all purple. And then another light, it'll be green and purple. Another light, it'll be teal and purple. It's kind of a, a neat effect. But I wanted to have the ultimate universe guitar, so I painted the universe on it. Painted everything on it, put all my stupid little things, take a piece of paper, put it down, take your white up against it, up against it, and then just a little spot in the middle. Then it looks really cool, like an airbrushed effect. doesn't have to be airbrush. You can do it with a can of Krylon. I've done it many times. Then after that, I kind of roughed it up just a little bit, but not enough to hurt my little planets. Shot it with clear. Now I've got to sand the clear and make it look a little prettier, but I did that just to protect the wood. So if we've got this guy here, I just realized that when I drilled this, I didn't drill from this cavity to this cavity, so i got to go back out and drill that. But I've got a nice mahogany guitar. Hang it out for an hour, hour and a half. Let it get all off-gassing, nice and hot. Not hot enough that it starts to crack. I had one crack and the whole side fell off. Not good. Don't hang it out in Phoenix for four hours. Let it do that. Spray it. It'll suck it in. Next coat, next coat. Always sand between coats, between four and 600. The guitar does not have to be the coolest looking thing in the world. It has to be unique to you. This is going to become a part of you. That's how you paint a guitar. And then when you're done with it, accept it. Accept it with all the flaws, all the dings, all the stupidity. I want to pull one guitar down here real quick. Because this, this was going to be the greatest guitar ever. This guitar is called Humpty. This guitar was supposed to be the most beautiful thing. In fact, it's all dusty right now. It's supposed to be the most beautiful guitar in the history of the world. All color change on the back and everything. But, why is this guitar called Humpty? As I was painting it, it fell off of my stand three different times. I'm painting it, it falls off and lands on its face, and I took rock chips and picked them out and kept on painting. This thing looks so cool from 10 feet. When you get right up on it, you start to see a couple of spots where it fell. You start to see a couple of nicks down here where it fell. Just make it so it works with you and say, that's cool enough. If you sit there and you try to make it perfect, you're going to cry the first time it's going to fall over. It's going to happen. We play clubs. It happens. That's the second step we have into making a Craigslist piece of junk a rockin' guitar. Stay tuned. We're coming up to number three here real soon. Catch you later. Keep on rockin'.